Yeah. Cool. So, um, hello everyone. We'll talk about vectors today. Um, and I'm going to. Oh, okay. Uh, you already sent the message. So I'm going to um reuse uh Ryan S's um deck for most part. And uh, you know, if there are questions, if you want to try something, we can always do that in our uh, in my in the R studio. And um, so th there was in his discussion, um, there was some bit of augmented vectors that was not discussed. So that I have in, in my slide uh, in my R's RMD slides. So I'll start with sharing my screen. I guess I'll share the entire desktop. Um, Uh, can you see the screen? Yes. Okay, perfect. So um, this chapter basically starts with uh, talking about the you know basics of you know what types of vectors we have, and then it talks about further how what are its properties and how do we deal with them in coercion and and things like that. So uh, to begin, uh, you know, it gives this. Um, uh, sort of a Venn diagram kind of view of what type of vectors we have and how you know how you sort of subset. So what what they say is basically there are uh, there are vectors and then there are nulls. So within vectors, um, we we have either atomic vectors or lists. So this is uh, one type and then this is another type. Now within atomic vectors there can be further three subtypes one could be logical basically a true false kind of a value uh, a numeric vector uh, which could be both an integer or it could be a double and um, third type is is a character type uh, atomic vector um, now um, you know basically the difference between atomic vector and lists in you know very similar to uh, i guess how we define data frame and uh, other uh, data types is that atomic vectors are homogeneous to me sec So uh, yeah, so atomic uh, vectors, you know, basically a collection of either logical or numeric or um, character type. Um, while list, however, can be heterogeneous. So it can be a collection of, you know, any any uh, type of data within uh, within that. Uh, so yeah, let's um, let's look into more details of what possible values can each vector type can have. Now, logical vector, like a normal logical data type, you can have either a true, false, or an NA, which indicates a missing value. Uh, a numeric kind of um, uh, atomic vector basically is, it can be both an integer or a double meaning, you know, a fraction or a decimal point uh, value. So they both are like anything that is numeric is is considered double by you know double uh, by default. Uh, it basically is if you if you're looking at the type of if you use a type of function like you know it's given here. In both the cases, like you know whether it's one or one point one, it will show you a double. Now one. Um, I guess not a trick, but uh, one of the ways of converting an integer into an integer in this uh, case is that you you place a L after the number. So in this example, as I've shown, and it's also in the book. So if you write type of for one, which is, you know, we would consider that as an um, integer, it would by default be taken as double. But if you write it as one L, then uh, it will show you that it, you know it transforms it into an integer. So again, it's it's sort of a coercion for the numeric uh, kind of uh, vectors. Um, any quick questions so far? I just had one. What does L actually mean? I have seen this whenever it's integer, like index one, two, three, four. 
It always has L. Does it have any spell? Um, I I'm not sure if it has like any specific significance or you know if it has a meaning or something. I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. It could be. Um, I wonder if it has to do something with, you know, the bit note uh, notations like in the storage, uh, or the space point of view. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. I'm not, not hundred percent sure though. Just guessing. Uh, Malik, were you saying something? Okay. So uh, now, and in this case, for the numeric uh, type of atomic vector, the you know something that we should uh, be aware of, or you know we would encounter um, in in different situations, are that this you know the special values. So Na is always a missing, but you could also encounter values like Nan, which is not a number, or you could find uh, you could see uh, positive and negative infinity, and most in all these three is you know you would encounter when you are doing any mathematical calculation so uh, if any there is any division by zero then you would have infinity or minus infinity um if you i, I imagine and I've, I've seen i've encountered nan before uh, but i'm trying to recall i think that would happen when uh, probably when you are adding a number to a string or doing some operation on a string, which is when probably you're assuming this is a numeric variable or a vector, but you are doing an, the value actually is a string. So the resultant would be not a number. Uh, anybody else um, has encountered uh, or remember any specific case when you would get an NAN? No, I have only encountered when it's, it, it's the string uh, uh, listing. That's the only case where I've seen any. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, okay, so let's move on to the character type vector. Um, and, you know, it, it pretty much mentions that it is one of the most complex type of atomic vectors, even though, you know, it is part of atomic because, you know, the strings are, as usual, uh, they are much more complex than numbers. Um, the only standard value you can uh, think of in this case is, you know, the missing values are Na. Um, and then, uh, then for the slide basically talks about the coercion. So if, um, oh, let me actually read this through. Since an atomic vector must have elements of all the same data types, R uses coercion rules to accomplish any kind of changes. So transformation, from one uh, type of um, atomic vector to another type. So if we are talking about, if I have a logical vector and I want to say transform it into a character vector, so we would have to use transformations. Uh, and in this table, you know, very nicely uh, gives a, a brief overview of what function you can use to, uh, for example, these are test functions. So is logical. And if you pass, uh, you know, whatever value or list name into this, uh, will tell you, so can you run this? Can you um, successfully run this, this function on what type of, um, uh, you know, um, vector? So only if your uh, vector is logical in nature, you know, you would have a reasonable result of true and false with uh, is logical. If you have um, integer or any numeric vector, your is integer or is numeric function is going to return uh, appropriate values. Um, is atomic is a function is a test function that works for all of these atomic uh, vectors, and logically so because this is uh, what we just learned, uh, and then other than the atomic vector is list. So, um, you know, is list uh, function is what works for them and is vector, like all of these are vectors. So this is like all, all encompassing um, function to, to identify lists versus maybe data frames or table. Excuse me. So um, that's that. I am thinking should we uh, probably 
do some uh, you know look at some examples and uh, you know look at their type of and uh, specific functions that are um, talked about yeah sure let me open up a new script and let's see uh, so let's start with um, maybe a numeric vector and uh, let's define it as two, three, four, five. And so what would be type off of this? It's double. So this is uh, what we, um, you know, saw that it's it's always a double by default. If it was, um, let's see, if I changed it to 2.2 and then everything else is same, what else would change? It, obviously nothing changes. Um, so there was, uh, in, in the previous discussion, they were talking about whether it looks at the first one or, you know, the uh, to identify the type of the vector. So, uh, that's one thing that I want to check. Uh, I have a question. L courses the number as explicit integer. If you don't use L, the number will be considered double, which takes more memory, right? I think, yeah, so that's what we were thinking. Um, Malik just uh, answered that in chat, Aditi, for your L yeah, question. Yeah, thank you. The course is number of explicit integer. So yeah, I guess it's, it's the same uh, memory thing. Okay, so uh, yeah, so I was saying, um, let's try and see if this changes. Um, okay, so in this case, it does not make sense of what I'm doing. Let's call it X and Y. <coughs> All right, so x now we um, uh, explicitly made it an integer so it's correctly saying it's an integer uh, its type of is integer so now here okay so this would have been default by default it would be this so now let's see if what what changes with y Okay, so it's not the first one. Uh, do, do, do you understand my question, Aditi uh, and Malik? So what I was trying to test is, um, so the, the, I think it, it, somebody had mentioned earlier, or I, I don't know if I read something before, is that, you know, um, it, while, while you are reading, so while R is reading this uh, vector, right? It, what uh, it does is it reads the first value and then it decides what uh, type of vector this will be. Like the type of will be decided by the first value. Uh, yes. This is, you, yeah, so this it, is yeah. what I was testing. So if this is 2L, um, it, it should have come out as an integer. But it still says it's a double. Double, yeah. So then um, apparently that indicates that... Um, I wonder, so does that mean all the values should be integer? Let's see if I change this. Does that change my X type of? Ah, right. Interesting. So for an integer, um, for a numeric vector to be identified as integer, you need all the elements to be explicitly uh, you know, them to be integers. If 
if even one of them is not then uh, the it would be a uh, double type of uh, numeric vector all right interesting right probably it's because of the memory right because double takes more memory it yeah. cannot assign a smaller um, uh, what do you mean uh like if all of them <clears throat> Excuse me. If all of them were given integer, but then the last number would have more memory, so that's not possible, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, makes sense. So yeah, so by default, uh, if one, like at least even if one uh, of the elements is uh, a double, to give it enough memory to you know store the value for that, everything else becomes a double. Everything else gets more memory. Yeah, you're right. Makes sense. Perfect. Um, what else? Uh, what else do we want to look at? Um, so if we have, if we see the Z was instead two, two, and one. So it's a character. Right, and what else? So because then again, I, I imagine um, this would take even bigger space, and hence everything becomes um, character. Um, yeah, and then they all actually become strings. What else? Um, just do Jupyter to see if you can have small number. Uh, okay, so now this is an interesting question. So this thing uh, also was, was part of the discussion. So I, I think I, it's a good one to bring it up. So now is numeric is a function that works like which, which tells you if this vector is numeric or not, right? Is true or false. So now if there is a vector which contains character strings, they said it won't work. And I want to test it. Why? So in this case, is numeric. Let's see, this is giving. Um, and because it's character. And what does it say about? Hmm. Um, so there is there is this one thing um, that uh, you know I have I have a question regarding is so there are two things right um, so what I am now looking at when I say is dot numeric it is telling me whether that vector is numeric or not right and there is uh, there is uh, what am I saying so what would you do for uh, testing this for each element of that vector you know when we want to filter out based on whether that whether this oh, i don't know let's say not missing values just one element no i am saying so for for each element not one element for each element if you want to uh, check whether so for example this has all the different uh, let's say if i make it 4.5 right this has both um, uh, a numeric in fact both so integer numer uh, double and a character vector so when when i assign this um, it becomes a, a character in 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 its entirety but what i'm thinking what i'm uh, I I ask, sorry go ahead no, no, even I was thinking that probably one of the elements which is numeric might be numeric, but I think all of them are characters. Is that the same thing you're thinking? Uh, no, I, I was wondering, so when, I, when I'm using this test functions, uh, it says x, it gives me one value, true or false. So whether this vector is, is uh, you know, numeric or not, meaning are all the elements within this vector numeric or not? Right, but what I'm thinking, what my question was is, what function do I use to um, test each element of the vector? Okay. 
so uh, i think based on what we were saying earlier molek replied saying if your vector has elements of different classes or takes the vector as the most restrictive of them if your vector is c 2 l 3 or for ds the vector will be a string class right this is this is what we exactly did so i can draw it for like this okay mm. okay that's maybe food for thought we should think about the difference between this and uh, every element comparison because when we when we look at a data frame and if i would do a is dot na right um on on that data frame i would like it would return to me like true false true false you know what i'm saying so if i yeah. if, if one data table has one column and it has five uh, values um let's see let me we try let's try it now Or can we try apply is numeric, apply then vector name and then is numeric function. Ah, uh, sure. Can you say that again? L apply. Ah uh, yes, L apply. Okay. And uh, say that again. Uh, what what should what do you want me to do after this? Ah, uh, apply then ah uh, vector name ah uh, that is ah. Uh, Vector uh, x and then uh, is numeric like this. Hmm. No. It needs the okay. You didn't do anything wrong. Ah, uh, is numeric. Ah, uh, will not have ah uh, brackets. It's just here. Yeah. Is it a function? Okay. Ah, oh, okay. Yes. Hmm. Okay. But um. Hmm. Okay. Let's let, let's try this um with the data frame uh, because I think what I am cons I mean hmm I don't know concern but. I am. I'm not because I personally have not used L apply a lot. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Okay. 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 Ok
I would expect that uh, it gives me. Um, I don't know. I think it is more relevant than when you filter. So something something similar of what about about you know what I was saying earlier, but think about it in the context of filtering, right? So then we when I say filter, let's say x more than three, right? And and let's say okay, I I don't have um. I, I don't have that string here. I it's a it's all numeric values. Now if I want to look at only values that are more than three, right? Uh, what it does under the hood is it says true, false, true, false. And then anything that is true is what it, did, what it returns, isn't it? What time series? What did I do? <laughs> All right. Um, Okay, I guess. Uh, so, any anything else we want to uh, try here? Or maybe I'll just go back to the um, deck. Um, hmm, I guess that should be all. <clears throat> so, um, after coercion and the uh, test functions, uh, it's uh, this chapter basically talks about. Um, vectorizing and recycling rules uh, specifically and what that means is if you uh, you know want to do any operation on two vectors which are not of same size uh, r would uh, recycle the the smaller uh, vector uh, as long as it is a multiple of uh, like the bigger one the larger vector is a multiple of the uh, smaller vector now, what that means is, um, let's see. So in this case, for example, here, it says I have uh, a vector of length five. I have another vector of length five. And if I have to do vector one minus, uh, vector two minus one, so this minus this, you would simply, okay, this is actually one minus two. So if you're doing two minus three, four minus five, six minus seven, eight minus nine, and 10 minus 11 and all of them are minus one so this this is what your final minus one would be your values however if let's say if it was only two vectors here three and five uh, what would happen is um uh it will so it'll do two minus three four minus five it will then repeat recycle these numbers so it, It'll have six minus three, eight minus five, but um, it in fact it also goes from ten minus three, but you know it does not have any anything else to follow. So I think it sort of gives you an error at that point. Um, if if it's only of one, um, if, if it is only of length one, then it can pretty much take the same number and recycle it for multiple times for um, as many times you need the large, the larger variable, larger vector, sorry, would uh, need for would be needed for the operation. So, for example, in 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 this case, uh, like I mentioned, uh, uh, for the tenth one, it would not know what to do. Uh, if it's only one, it basically just takes up this. I, I would say it treats it as a scalar, and would say two minus three, four minus three, six minus three, eight minus three, and ten minus three in this case. Um, Again, uh, this is some one of the things that we could try, or maybe we could try later and uh, come back with questions, um, whatever you suggest. Malik or Aditi? Uh, I don't think it's fine. Um, yeah, uh, I encounter this issue uh, many times, so uh, I'm pretty familiar with this. 
Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So that's... Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, oh no. Uh, like I, I never used to understand that how to um, if I had to subtract it, then what? Uh, sometimes we have data frame which runs up to ten thousand, and then have another data frame which is like half of it or not the uh, multiple of it. So uh, yeah, I used to get super confused, but. Uh, then I started understanding that in the background it needs a um, whole data frame to um, to be able to exactly do the operations, or else it will uh, the uh, remaining elements will feel confused. Like what is it supposed to use in the end? Right. right. Okay. That makes sense. So, so uh, what what would happen? Um, does it does it not uh, do the operation, or does it give NA? uh what would what would you expect to see here so i don't get anything like uh it shows some kind of error to me yeah if i even try to do something anything yeah. which doesn't have yeah right okay perfect so now um the next topic um you know once we have understood what the different vectors are uh, and and this is um i guess very useful to understand especially when it become gets on to the list part um, how do we subset these vectors um, using different kinds of um, vectors that we that we just talked about? So, if we want to, um, and and I guess this is also taught, like especially this slide that these examples that are here, they're also taught like in in the beginning when you know you are doing your base R um, uh, chapters or like technically somebody's let's say you know if you're, somebody's teaching you base R. Um, these are some of the methods of how you would subset your uh, data frame. Um, but uh, again, just to sort of revisit, uh, what, what does it mean by subsetting with an integer vector is that um, when you use uh, like whatever vector value you have, and then you when you pass integer, when you pass another integer vector, uh, as basically it, it is providing a position of what you want to pick out of your um, existing um, vector and and this is sort of the case that i was i think mentioning earlier when we do the sampling and then i pass that to subset that that is what it is basically picking up so those row on the row numbers in the sample vector is what it indicates and you know how this is subsetting um, so in this case for example x is a vector which which is a character vector with values one two three four uh, five as um as the uh, you know different strings now if i want to subset only third second and fifth values out of that i am i can use this notation um basically what this does is uh, it is subsetting using an integer vector 3 to 5 uh, and then it is going to pick the values by position and i see a chat question thank you so it's not a question, it's a comment. Thanks, Aditi. Um, similarly, you know, just the way we did this, uh, you could also, it, it also allows you to repeat. So it, you know, it's just the integer vector, which is talking about the position. So if you repeat that position, it would actually replicate the, uh, the actual value or the content of your uh, vector. Um, you could also drop them or remove them by using a negative prefix to the position. Uh, and I think I, this this is uh, sometimes really useful if you have big vector and you, your exclusions are meant to be very few. Um, you cannot, uh, so if you specifically this one, it just brings up that you cannot have uh, plus and minus at the same time, which basically, uh, is, is sort of a logical thing as well that you cannot have you know it's it's a, it's another way of saying you cannot have a selection and a drop a drop kind of statement at the same time um so this uh, if you do that you would basically uh, it would error out for you um and then there is this last example i guess i i would love to hear from others what how they find this like what this means i'm not too sure so it says you could also just say x zero um, and it, it would return a character zero and it is um and, and i'm not sure what this means so 
you know this is creating a null vector or something in in the comments this says it's not useful very often but it is there and it can be used for testing functions um anybody has opinions thoughts on this So it will just show uh, if uh, X is a numeric or a character a double, it will just show that uh, it, nothing is there in this uh, index, right? Oh, okay, okay. So yeah. X is okay, a numeric. I point. I got your point. So it, it is telling you that X is a character vector mm -hmm. and yeah. there is there is nothing at zero position. Yeah, uh, that's what I have tried. Even if, uh, if my vector is a uh, numeric, then I get numeric zero. So mm -hmm. okay, but um, yeah, I think that makes sense. But uh, can you can you uh, you know give an example, Aditi? Like what situation have you used it? Like how this helps? <laughs> no, I, I I didn't. I haven't used it. But by mistake, I have tried to access the zeroth element. Okay. Um, and then there I found that it was numeric because all my vector was a numeric there. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Um, all right, so um, now, so we talked about how do you subset a vector with an integer? So basically that, uh, you know, it, was, it pro provides you position. Um, if it's a logical vector, and I think this is what I was talking about. <laughs> um, so if I have- uh, yes. um, <laughs> uh, if I have a vector with, you know, whatever, a number of values, um, you could provide, you could, um, let's see, so you are doing, you're, you're producing a logical vector by itself, is dot na, not is dot nax produces a logical vector. So, yeah, so the test functions, you know, similar to the test functions that we were looking at, uh, if I run one of that, like is dot any, for example, in this case on this vector X, which in this case is, I imagine a numeric vector. So it, it is going to tell me whether or not, you know, the numbers are, is an, uh, are, you know, it's, if it's a missing value and uh, it, it, it is run on each element of this vector. Now, if I use this vector itself, I can use that to um, filter uh, these values. So what this is doing is it is only going to return the true values in the end. So um, so, so this, is, this is how we subset actually. So the combining these two. Um, uh, so, so what basically, let's see, so this, this part we've understood, right? What, when I, when I am doing this with a hard coded logical vector, what this means is that we want to, uh, like, you know, you, you want to throw out or you want to keep the, uh, the first value, the second value, you don't want the third value and then so on. So what it is returning is only those from the positions which are true. So 10 comes in, three comes in, and a is not coming in, and, and five, eight, and one. Um, and then this is the same logic we then use to, um, you know, combining these two. If I do X, um, parent, not parenthesis, this is the square brackets, uh, and then, you know, is dot any function, it is going to give me only the non-missing values. <clears throat> um, any questions, any concerns on this one? Okay, good. So moving on, um, subsetting vectors with character vector or uh, using names. Um, again, so here it says uh, you can you can add a name and an equal to sign before the uh, vector to assign a name to each value. And then you can, uh, similar to uh, the position, if I pass the uh, name, I can use that to uh, subset using these, these names that you're assigning within the vector. If um, you, uh, you know, by mistake, or for some reason, if you pass a name which does not exist, 
then it will return an na for for that call uh, for that value so it's uh, you know pretty much similar to how you would um, access a data frame in that sense or or subset a data frame so in the first case it was you know how we would do that for uh, how you would pass the position of um column in uh, if it's a data frame and in this case it's the actual value because it's only one d vector uh, i think that's the only difference um moving on um see uh so uh, did you guys read through the pepper shake uh, example hello yeah um so um um so i i think i i was i, I found that example you know not, not a bad one or a decent example so uh, that basically is an example for understanding how to access the um, vector values or list values um now i think and list becomes a little complicated right and i think it it while when you are working on it 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 still is it's always a challenge so um i'll try and talk about both the examples though i i don't think i have the photographs of, of that pepper shaker i don't think do we have it here yeah okay so um so what this uh, you know this analogy says is if you have a list uh, you you treat it as this pepper shaker when you want to bring or when you want to read every element inside it you have to use the square brackets uh, but then uh, understand i think what is important to understand is when you are doing this x1 or when you are using that um, square bracket it is still you know inside the shaker and it is still the uh, it is still a list type um if you have um if you if you want to get just that value so if you just want to get this pepper inside from inside out you want to use double square brackets i think that's the biggest um um sort of take away for me is that you know that when you're using first uh, one uh, square bracket it is still a list when you want if when you do uh, double square brackets that's when you actually get when you get the actual value um and in case uh, you know again it it this and this i would say it depends on what is the content of your um, uh, element so if this is an individual element like if it's an integer i guess that this this should be eight but if it's another list uh you probably want to do this to get the 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 lowest layer numbers out of that um so the same thing you know this uh ryan has shown in his deck he he didn't like this example so he said okay what if my, so list can be heterogeneous right if uh, for example his list contains different um pieces and he, he talked mostly about this example so where alpha is a data frame bravo is um, is a numeric vector and then charlie is actually a function now how would you access uh, the elements so when when i look at the uh, when i just define so this is how i'm defining this list and when i just type big list it would return everything it would return um, the the name of the element and then it will uh, return the actual element itself now if you use when you use uh, the first bracket uh, first uh, like one only one um, square brackets to access any of these uh, you know it would return uh, actually let me just go down and show the example um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so yeah when when we use big list one this is what it returns so it sort of you know just um takes this snapshot um and when i do two this is what it would return so it is still giving you um 
you know, it's this is still a list. It is still inside the the paper is still inside the box. It it is giving it is showing you that first paper or the third paper, but it is still inside the box. When we have to use it, you take it outside, <laughs> and so you use you. Um, I don't know if, if it makes sense, but you open up the jar and <laughs> you you put two square brackets for that, and that's where um, you get your actual data frame. So. Um, even if you did uh, type off in, in these two cases, this is what would give a data frame, not this one. Um, similarly, uh, you know, if whatever data type it might be, uh, the actual values or the actual elements would only be shown when, with the second uh, uh, two, two uh, square brackets. Um, and now this, in, this was interesting to see that, you know, that he, he took an example of um the function now if uh and I, I think it's useful because if we were to use it this in in another situation um this this taught me how i would actually make a function call so um so see this so if uh this is how you're accessing uh it is still giving you a list and you cannot pass a um it's, it still doesn't know that it's a function. So passing a value here into that function is not working. But while you uh, pass um, it to this, which is now being identified as a function, this takes this value in, passes it onto the function and then calculates. In this case, it's very simple. So it passes eight here and it returns eight plus 10. Um, and that's pretty much um you know what this subsetting in case of um lists means and i think yeah this this is a pretty strong concept because with lists it, it is always a challenge and i have spent hours on one of the projects that i can remember when i when i was looking at this um and it was like the basic uh the the starting point for getting those strings was i think i was doing a string split on one of the columns and I just wanted to, I don't know, probably want only the first values or only the last values. And yeah, it, it was it was not easy, uh, you know, figuring out uh, how to get that one element from. So there is one column which had lots of values and I wanted to do a string split at certain uh, with a certain delimiter. And each row was returning a uh, um, a string because that's what string split function does um and then what was happening was you know that one element was actually getting copied to all the rows and i just could not figure out why and i think this this is what the the big challenge in, in that situation was okay so so this is about atomic vectors and lists so now this is what i was saying so uh, this is, I think we're pretty much done, but uh, let's just sort of um, wrap up uh, with, with a little discussion on the augmented vectors. So these are the vectors that are built on top of the atomic vectors. Um, and namely, there are factors, dates, date and time, and tables. Um, factors are designed specifically to represent the categorical data, uh, which can take up, you know, a few uh, text values or even if it's numeric you basically consider them as strings um and they are built on top of integers and they have a levels attribute so um if uh, i'm imagine you know some of you have already used four cats package so that allows you to sort of level or re-level uh, what values <clears throat> you can use for a factor um and it's it's really powerful uh, in in terms of when you start plotting your values, at least for me, that's how I've used it. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I think in, in terms of grouping as well, in some cases, um, but yeah, so um, that's that's factors, basically transformation uh, or representation of um, categorical variables. Um, dates and date time, these are, uh, you know, specific numeric type of vectors that represents uh, the number of days and the number of uh, seconds uh, since January 1st, 1970. Date time is actually of class POS6 CT and 
I don't want to get into that. I guess uh, that would have been discussed in the dates chapter. Um, but yeah, again, it's another complicated bit. Um, so this represents seconds and tables. Uh, so tables are augmented lists with the class um, table df or table uh, and data frame and the names column and the row names attributes. So um, I guess, um, uh, what else? So I, I don't know if I, there's anything specific I wanted to add about tables. But um, yeah, I guess I, I found it a little more neater and then data frames. Um, and, and, and for me, in, in terms of slides, this is all I have. Uh, anybody wants to add anything here? Uh, no, um, I'm good. Uh, thank you so much, Priyanka. Um, I wanted to do this chapter as well. That's why I didn't miss it today. Otherwise, uh, Tuesday morning is a little bit... Uh, <laughs> Challenge. Uh, yeah, challenging, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you so much. Sure, sure. No problem. And thank you, um, you know, for attending. Um, yeah. And I think uh, if especially for I would say I think if there are any more list specific questions for how to access them and all, we should talk about it on the chat, like the Slack yeah. channel. Um, yeah. You know, in this group or the other ones, um, that would be really uh, good to um, maybe clear out any confusion, any uh, questions we may have. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, all right. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. See you next Bye. week. Bye-bye.